communicate with pan-dimensional beings, possibly alien beings from another world or another dimension. Now, how would that work? How would you communicate with an ET by being in this psychedelic realm? Well, so much of the trip reports, there's thousands of DMT trip reports, and I have to make mention to the fact that DMT seems to be in a class on its own, aside from all the other psychedelics, because all the other psychedelics, they seem to warp this world. What DMT does is it seems to, once you break through this wall, magnifies it, doesn't it? What it does is it transports you to another very um, structured reality. So it's not like just a warped, uh, amorphous reality that you're in. It's a very structured other reality. And the beings that we come in contact, uh, contact with there, we know that they're extremely intelligent, far more intelligent than we are. They sense our presence. Sometimes they do things that you would hear about in alien abductions, like probing you, strapping you to a table, right. implanting things inside you. Sometimes they're benevolent and they, they impart you with great wisdom. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes they abuse you. Sometimes they're just bothered by you. They're indifferent, but they just, they don't want you in their space. They tell you never to come back. This is extremely peculiar. And so now what people are saying is that DMT it's also strange because it's only a 15 minute high, whereas everything else is six, eight, sometimes 12 hours. 15 minutes and you're back. You're completely normal. You can hold down a conversation. What brings you back like that? It's, it's just, just the fact that your body metabolizes it so quickly and efficiently. There's no toxicity, there's no tolerance. So now what people are saying, one of the technological futures of DMT is to be able to actually hook it up intravenously. They call it a DMTX. Ouch. Right, they call it DMTX or extended state DMT, where you could technically stay in the peak state for a very long period of time, theoretically indefinitely. Now, the, the reason is, is if these are truly intelligent, otherworldly beings, and they can, if some of them really do want to help us, we have enough ecological problems on this planet, and we seem to not have any clue of what to do about it, even though we can point to industry and we can point to the issues so what if we need very large scale solutions in a very short amount of time? Well, what if we can extend this state so we can get our bearings and we're not like feeling very like weird in this other state, eventually we get our bearings. Now we can hold a conversation. Now we can actually have a protocol. And this is, is this contact? Are we actually talking about a neurological tool for us to uh, have contact where we don't need a vessel? You know, this is our light body being able to connect with otherworldly beings that might have solutions that would save us from ecological disaster. There seems to be this incredible need for the human body to explore beyond our own realm. Hence, maybe the need for psychedelics. Absolutely, and I wouldn't say that we need psychedelics. I would just say that we are in a state right now, modern consciousness is in a state where we're so conditioned by our toys and our gadgets. Right. It also, the things that we don't think about is how that affects our physical body. We're always neck forward. That impinges upon the fascial system, and that causes for, um, our myofascial system is actually fiber optic. And the reason why you can have something graze past one of your toes in nature, and you can react to that before your nervous system or your brain even receives the signal. Funny you mentioned that. I was at the airport yesterday heading here from St. Louis and everybody, Ben, has got their smartphones, and they're all tilted down. And I mean, I looked at a whole row of people, and I'm going, are they text messaging each other? What's going on here? But you're right, and they're always in that, that position. Can't that's, be healthy. No, and that's why I believe the future is technological, really, because that's what we see. That's definitely where we're heading with virtual reality. And when we're talking about psychedelics, what we're really talking about is an altered state of consciousness. Well, that's what all the technology is doing for us. It's putting us into an alternate reality. And so what people are saying now is that the extended state DMT, that's technology and also biology fusing for us to be able to enter a different world. Well, we know that if an asteroid were to hit the planet, our genes would start expressing themselves differently. We're in trouble. Right, but we adapt. You know, our genes adapt and they do this. We mutate when we experience environmental stress. And that's what that's doing is that's causing for us to be able to develop a way to deal with a new kind of world. Well, what if we're in the DMT world? What if we're in an alien world because the DMT is allowing up for us or an aspect of us to travel? 
So what happens if we're in that world for a long period of time, like the extended state DMT would allow us, will we start adapting to those rules, that reality? What if gravity, uh, the speed of light, what if all the things that we consider to be constant in this reality are different in that reality? Could we start then transferring those abilities, adapting to those uh, rules back here? What would that mean for us if with our consciousness we could slow down time or speed up time or start changing the, the very fabric of space-time itself? What's the downside of psychedelics then? Uh, the downside of psychedelics is you see people going down into the Amazon and uh, they're doing ayahuasca ceremony after ayahuasca ceremony and they're never integrating the experience. They seem happy. Some of them do, some of them do, but some of them seem lost into the world of it and like, I need my ayahuasca to feel normal. What does that sound like? Yeah. That sounds like just another addiction, That's just another addiction. reason to use an externality to make us feel normal. So I would say the downside is the fact that there are a lot of people that feel like they're uber spiritual, feel like they're on some spiritual path, when really all they're doing is they're taking psychedelics day in, day out, and they're entering into this world, but they never come back into the consensus world. And here, here's why that's very important. There's a semi Alan Vior. He was a Mexican uh, Gnostic. He believed he was the reincarnation of the Archangel Semiel. Mm -hmm. And so he believed he was a Bodhisattva. And the difference between a Bodhisattva and a Nirvani, or uh, somebody who reaches Nirvana, is somebody who reaches Nirvana and just wants to stay in that pu uh, beautiful, pristine, um, heaven-like state, what they're doing is they're not entering back into what we would consider to be this world where there's, there's hell on earth in many ways. There's also heaven on earth. But if you do not enter yourself back into the suffering, if you do not enter yourself back into the consensus world that everybody is involved in, then you're not helping humanity. And my, the thing is, is I'm not pro psychedelics. I'm not pro anything except for serving our fellow man, doing something with real solutions on this planet. And that means the reason why I would ever suggest psychedelics is not so you could do something that affects your consciousness so you can get this weird tickle. Right. I'm talking about let's find solutions so we can figure out why more than half the population has dietary issues, many people can't even get clean water, while eight people in the world own more wealth than a majority of the other people. This is just Welcome not Welcome to sane. the world, it's nuts. It's can not you over-ingest psychedelics? You can over-ingest them in the sense where you will have a very psychologically terrifying experience because it's such a new type of world. Imagine we have a filtration system, so not all of the information in the field around us actually bombards our nervous system, so we filter it down. What happens when you take psychedelics is you're actually opening up that filter and you're exposed to more information. More information is good, but the reason why you don't tell children about, you know, like early on about sex and death and some of the most horrible and heinous things sure. that, is because they can't, they can't process it, it all at once. It's, it's too much for them. And that's why we have such a thing called time. We Too have, much for most adults, to tell you the truth. <laughs> you're very right about that, and that's because much of the time we're trying to dumb down our consciousness. We're trying to close that filter back off to us. So can you over-ingest it? Yes, in the sense where you can open yourself up to so much information it could be traumatizing, but there's very little toxicity. You would have to take so much of it that you would pass out before you would even notice a hangover the next day. Um, this is true for uh, cannabis as well, which is not really a psychedelic. Right. Um, and there's also no toxicity. In fact, um, we're, t we're constantly told this narrative that psychedelics are these hard narcotics and they're drugs and you should feel bad about taking them. But what we're finding is that people are actually curing whatever that word means, their depression, their anxiety, their opioid addictions, their addictions to alcohol, their addictions to many other things, psychedelics are actually bringing that back that patterning down to base state so they can actually see that there's more to life than this dopamine pathway that they've been uh, triggered by. Can we reach these states, Ben, without using these psychedelics? Absolutely. I think our shamans have been doing that since the beginning through dancing. Uh, throughout the night without drinking water. There's breathing exercises you can do. Actually, there's a guy named Wim Hof that has a breathing technique that actually many of the people who are actually speaking about their experiences are saying, okay, I've done psychedelics before, and this is a psychedelic state, but I've done nothing except for breathe. 
And so I actually recommend people enter into the psychedelic realm or the territory without doing the substances because A, at present they're still illegal, and B, oxygen is free and still legal at this point. So far. So far. So you can breathe yourself into these states. You can actually um, do things like chanting or drumming, movement practices. This is why I do a lot of movement in nature because I believe this is what our evolution has prepared us for. And if we're gonna arrive at any solutions through psychedelics or psychedelic-like states, it's gonna happen in nature. It's gonna happen in communion with the natural world. What?